China's economy appears to be slowing down. The second quarter GDP number is due out in a few hours, and growth is expected to dip below 8%. If so, that would be a three-year low. Analysts blame weak markets both at home and abroad, though in an effort to help the economy, China's central bank has cut interest rates twice in a single month. Well, for more on what this all means, we're going to talk to Ann Lee, an economist and author of What the U.S. Can Learn from China, joining us now from New York. Thanks so much for being with us. Let me ask you the most basic question. People are talking about uh, interest, or rather, uh, growth rates of 7.6, 7.7%. That means China's economy is still booming. It means, um, in a conventional sense, people are still going to have more money in their wallets, more food at home, more opportunities, more products. Why is everyone grimacing that this is such bad news? Well, for one, China has been growing double digits before. So people are used to a much higher growth rate and feel that given the very slow uh, recovery in the U.S. and uh, the uncertainties in Europe, everyone would hope that China can pull the rest of the world out with spectacular growth. And given that uh, China has slowed down a bit, which, by the way, was completely engineered by their policymakers, uh, people have become more concerned because Wall Street traders often like to see more growth, not less growth. Now, you've touched on some important things, but let me, let me touch on that last point, um, that this is not an accident, this is intentional. There were two schools of thought, or it seemed, um, when it came to China's slowing economy, that uh, essentially mismanagement was going to catch up with the Chinese leadership eventually, and the economy was going to slow as a result. That there are other people who are saying that the Chinese economy has been so brilliantly managed that growth has been so strong that there are just limits to how, how well anyone can keep pushing an economy that fast. It sounds like you're with the side who say this is the, the, the good work of experts. I'm sure there's some truth to both sides, but if you had to ask me which side do I agree with more, I would agree that yes, I think they've brilliantly managed their economy. They uh, have used a lot of different measures to uh, try to engineer a slowdown, and now that they have gotten exactly what they wanted, uh, they're stepping on the gas pedal again. So I'm actually more optimistic that China's uh, economy will pick up uh, after in the second half of the year. And I explain in my book how China is able to uh, manage their economy so well which I explain in several chapters. Well, let me ask you about one particular thing. Even the title says, what the U.S. can learn from China. Uh, the, the other point you were making is that China is an engine of global growth. So at a time like this, when China's cooling things off a little bit, what should the U.S., what should the European Union, what should other nations be mindful of uh, as China goes through these steps? Sure. One of the chapters I mention is called systematic experimentation, basically, because I basically say that China's policymakers treat their economy like a petri dish, the way that, say, scientists would test out a hypothesis in a laboratory. And before they roll out policies, they will uh, test it to and then have control groups to make sure that there are no unintended consequences. They're very gradualist this way. And once something makes sense, then they roll it out to more and more parts of the country. And yes, the European Union has something similar. Uh, they also provide loans and, and, and actually even just equity to different projects throughout the European Union to, uh, to try to engineer growth. But I would say there are major differences between what has happened in the EU and what has happened in China, given that China would be measuring specific results and, and, and to see what the projects would yield and what these policies would yield, whereas I think the European Union actually focused more on the inputs, such as, well, did we meet the budget on time and did this project meet the timeline, as opposed to did it actually create more jobs in the end? And so it's those sort of lessons that I talk about in my book. And Lee, the book, once again, What the U.S. Can Learn from China. Thanks so much for talking with us. Thank you.